All right. So today I wanted to talk about Sky Moore. I actually kind of want to talk about him a few days back, but I've just got around to it today. So my co-manager and I decided uh, last night that we we're going to uh, go all in and get Garrett Wilson in our auction draft. And the discussion behind why we pick Garrett Wilson is similar to the conversation about why we're also probably going to get Sky Moore, except Sky Moore is going to cost us a lot less to go get. In the case of Sky Moore, like you have to be able to appropriately value their upside versus the risk. Sky Moore has virtually no risk because he's likely going to be going outside of your top seven picks. Your top, top, seven, top, top seven picks should end up constituting your roster with very few except or your lineup with very few exceptions um because again you don't want to have too much value on your bench even though i tend to view the entirety of my draft being separate from my lineup but some people don't so in the case of sky Moore, what you're looking at is a guy who should be valued roughly a wide receiver wide receiver three with massive massive upside and as a wide receiver three, he really can't hurt you because a wide receiver three is somewhere, depending on, you know, obviously your uh, your league settings, but wide receiver three should be somewhere along the line of a guy that you're going to play in your flex as a replacement level wide receiver two. Um, it, it is also a guy that you can easily uh, replace off the waiver wire in, I don't want to say shallower leaves, but like, uh, there are a lot of wide receiver threes. There are a lot of wide receiver threes with upside. And in the case of Sky Moore, how, and I'm going to show underdog. Underdog primarily is, you know, best ball, but he's going at wide receiver 44, which is really pushing him almost outside of wide receiver four land. And uh, from, from an ESPN standpoint, as I'm not ready to, to do this again, Sky Moore is going, depending on your league format, probably about like, eighth, ninth, 10th round, he's wide receiver 41 overall, slightly higher on ESPN. But to explain risk versus upside, um, we have to go look at the, the main guy that the Kansas City lost last year, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster. He signed a free agent contract with uh, the Patriots, and he he's gone. So last year, Juju put up 900, uh, 900 yards receiving on 78 receptions he did miss some time and his production fell off at the end of the season but you know primarily he was operating for lack of a better way to put it as the pay or the uh, the chiefs number one um which is not saying a lot because their number one is their number two because chavis kelsey is their number one which we'll get into here in a second so he had 933 yards on 78 receptions 101 targets three touchdowns well sky moore is operating as in the two wide receiver sets for the Chiefs, as far as we know, coming out of camp. Uh, MVS is going to be on the outside, but he's a limited player. We kind of know what he is. He's just a vertical threat. He's not going to be a target hog in any meaningful manner. So we have uh, MVS, Sky Moore right now slotted into two. Uh, there's been camp video of Sky Moore operating out of the backfield. Um, so those are all good things. Um, so even if they come out and say three wide receiver or three tight end sets with the chiefs have shown to do, there still needs to be a wide receiver stays on the field. It may be sky Moore, It may be, uh, MVS either way. If we can take Juju Smith Schuster's production and move it over apples to apples to a player, it's more than likely going to be sky Moore because MVS last year, he had, you know, 687 yards, two touchdowns, and 42 receptions. I, I could see him having a slight bump, just in the same way that, like, Sky Moore might have a, a, a slight apples to oranges when it comes to uh, Smith-Schuster and be in the 700 to 800 uh, receiving yard range as they 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 move those targets around. So from, from a fantasy perspective, um, if I can go out and I can get Sky Moore in the 8th, ninth, or 10th round, and he's not projected to be a part of my lineup, um, he's going to be on my bench. Um, I could even go out and I could see wasting a seventh round pick on a Sky Moore and, and slotting him into my, my flex because we're going to talk about upside. Because the main two things with the Kansas City offense is that they are the number one passing offense in coming. The number one passing offense 
from last year going into this year. So that passing volume is likely going to persist even if they don't remain the number one passing offense. So you're buying potentially the number one wide receiver on the highest volume passing offense in the league. Uh, so there, the inherent upside of Sky Moore is going to outweigh the risk of taking him, especially when you're getting him outside of those non-premium rounds, one through five, and the sixth to seventh to finish off your lineup rounds. So like already he should be lovable, except for the fact that when you toss in on top of all of this other stuff that's going on with Sky Moore, um, that Travis Kelsey is going to turn 34 in October. He is their de facto number one. And if Father Time, who is undefeated, can chip away a little bit at Travis Kelsey, some of that production can go to Sky Moore. So now you have a guy that plus or minus when we if we're gonna honestly set his uh plus or Sky Moore's plus or minus over underline about the not 800 900 yard range. Um what we're what we what we want to look at is okay, how much more room for growth is there with Sky Moore? Well, if if we can honestly go, hey, maybe Kelsey takes a step back, Sky Moore takes a step forward. Well, now Sky Moore moves out of that wide receiver three range and he's easily into the wide receiver two range. That's regardless of actually Kelsey's taking a step back, that's just Sky Moore's good at football. Right. And there's more targets to go to him because he's the focal point with Kelsey. Yeah, we can maybe start making the argument that he's got that top 10 upside and we're getting him outside of not non premium rounds. But the other thing that I that I like that really sold me was the Chiefs are going to come out in these um, these sets, these packages in the red zone um, that are kind of gimmicky they, with their, their trick plays and they were running Sky more out of the backfield. So. Like now, if we can factor in a little bit of a push with uh, rushing upside or just touchdowns going to Sky Moore in the red zone, either rushing or receiving, now he becomes this this monster. So like as long as Sky Moore is there for me, even in the seventh round, he's a guy that I got to pull the trigger on because I can replace a seventh rounder rather easily. Um, I can't replace a top 20, top 15, top 10 guy with all that upside someplace else in the draft because a guy like him if we come back in a year and and someone like me is like well i'm planting my flag this is my my justification behind him and i'm right well i just found a league winner and to be able to explain the downside of sky more uh it's it's a little bit easier because we can go and we could Kadarius tony and this is one of the uh the main arguments about why sky more is not going to be super awesome Kadarius Tony is probably going to be the gadget guy that Nicole Hardman was. Nicole Hardman left and went to the, the Jets. So these are kind of probably not going to be the same role within the Kansas City offense. And then the other guys, Rasheed Rice, uh, I do like Justin Ross a lot, uh, Justin Watson, Richie James. Like the Chiefs have shown that they they will cycle in a lot of players into their offense. They kind of do have roles for all of them. But the main thing is like, well, Juju had a role last year. Sky Moore actually fits that role the best out of everybody that's there. And we can get that wide receiver three uh, floor, for lack of a better way to put it, out of Sky Moore going outside of wide receiver three range with this upside that goes along with him. So, like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he has 1,000, 1,200 yards receiving with, like, seven, eight touchdowns um, and maybe another one or two on the ground. And now – he's just blown his, his, uh, his value out of the water or, or his cost out of the water. And, and for a guy like me where I can go, well, I, I can plant my flag. I can go up in the seventh round. And I can get him. I can go up in the eighth round and I get him. I can go up in the ninth round. And I can get him. I don't want to be waiting till the 10th round in some leagues to go get a guy like sky Moore because at that point, if I think that he's good enough and it has very little to do, if I think he's good enough, it has very much more to do with like, what do I see the range of outcomes for him having? And, you know, ESPN has him listed at 700 yards receiving 57 uh, receptions and six touchdowns. Well, are already at, you know, wide receiver, what 41, he's already looking to be able to exceed his, uh, his value based off just those projections. So anyway, that's just my thoughts on sky Moore and how to value uh, risk versus upside. And I think maybe tomorrow I'll talk about, uh, Luke Musgrave, who I'm really high on, 
and how um, he's already going to blow his ADP as long as uh, no one really understands what's going on in Green Bay. Um, and maybe I'll talk about uh, uh, my, my thoughts on Garrett Wilson later on in the week, why we, we jumped him um, in our rankings because of how much massive upside he has, even though I think he's already been priced out of uh, that upside. So anyway, see you guys later.